Hey guys, today I thought it would be fun to do an updated version of the if I lost all my makeup tag. I think this was a tag that was going around on YouTube like five years ago, and I believe it was started by Emily Noel. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure she was the first one to do this video. But the idea here is if I lost my entire makeup collection, what would be the first products I would run out and buy? So I put together essentially a full face of makeup, so something in every category, although there were some categories I skipped because I don't feel like they're necessarily essential to my routine. In the past when I've done this video, I've included products that I've never tried before because I was thinking, you know, realistically, if I lost all my makeup, there would probably be some categories where I'd want to try something new. But this time I decided to just stick to products that I have tried. I feel like for one, that'll be a little bit more interesting and helpful for you to watch because these are things that I've actually tried and they're, it's more like kind of a favorites video. Like these are my current favorite products. So if I were to lose all my makeup and I could only buy products that I know I like, this is what I would choose. The first thing I would buy, this is something I use every single day that I do my makeup. It's the Ardell Brow Glue Instant Lamination Lift. This is serious business. Like this is a true brow glue. I've also tried the NYX brow glue and that one I just feel like does not truly glue my brows down. This is like a real glue. Like it even looks like a glue when you pull out the wand. It looks like a sort of sticky Elmer's glue sort of situation. I definitely only recommend this if you really like a laminated brow look. That's what I like because I have very wavy brow hairs and this is one of the only products i've found that truly holds them into place like this glues my brows to my face and they don't move all day they really do feel laminated so if you want a fake a laminated look this is the product to go for i have never tried anything like it a few key things with this number one you have to apply this before foundation because it just doesn't work well over foundation. It'll kind of lift up the foundation and it like mixes with the foundation and it just looks odd. So you really have to apply this as like the first step of your makeup routine. You also have to be sure not to apply too much. So I will just brush this through my brows until I feel like all the hairs have some glue on them. And then I'll go in, it comes with this tool that has like a brush on one end and then a flat paddle side on the other end. I also have the e.l.f. brow lift applicator, so I'll just kind of alternate between these two. But I then use this to press the hairs down, and this is what really glues them to your face. And I try to be careful not to push up too much to where the glue is going to get on my skin, because then it's also going to interact weirdly with the foundation. So I really try to just keep it confined to the brow area. If I get a little bit on my skin, it's fine. I'll just kind of like scrape it off with this tool. If this sounds like way too many caveats, I totally understand. For me, it's worth it, but I could see how for some people that's just like way too much to think about when you're doing your brows. But I absolutely love this. This would be my first purchase. So that's the first step of my routine. I do fill in my brows at a later step in my routine, but the next step is foundation, and this was a no-brainer for me. The ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. This is actually my second bottle of this. I just repurchased it recently because I had run out and I was really missing having this in my collection. So I went out and got another one. Another thing I love about this is it comes in a perfect shade match for me. This is the shade Fair 30N, and there is no foundation in the world that matches me as well as this. So I just love it both for that reason, but also for the formula of this. It is really unlike any other foundation I've tried. It's for a pretty affordable price, at least by today's standards. I think it retails for $16. This has medium buildable coverage and a satin finish, which is really nice because it kind of adapts to whatever you pair it with. So if you pair it with a glowy sunscreen or a glowy primer, it'll have a little bit more glow to it. Or if you pair it with a mattifying primer or mattifying sunscreen, it'll give you more of like a soft matte finish. So it's very adaptable. And it's also one of those foundations that I feel like no matter what, it's going to look good on my skin. You know, there are some foundations where you don't really know what you're gonna get. Like some days it looks amazing, other days it looks terrible. That's not the case with this one. So I just love how consistent it is. It never accentuates dry skin. It has really great staying power for me and it just makes my skin look good no matter what. So this would absolutely be the first foundation I would run out and buy. The concealer I would buy first, this was also a no-brainer. The NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I wear the shade Light. This is also like a perfect shade match for me, the shade Light. It actually, matches the ColourPop foundation pretty perfectly too. So that's probably one reason why this is such a favorite, but I also love the texture of this concealer so much. It's really lightweight, like not necessarily in a runny liquidy sort of way, but in more of like a 
gel kind of way. I primarily use concealer on my under eyes and I feel like this just melts into my under eye skin so nicely. It doesn't feel like it's sitting on top of my skin. It doesn't crease nearly as much as other concealers do. I actually find this formula very similar to the Kosas Revealer Concealer, but I actually like this a little bit better mainly because I found a better shade match in this line, but also it's a fraction of the price. You get way more product. And I also feel like this one is a little bit more long wearing. I once did like a side-by-side -side wear test of these and this one ended up holding up better throughout the day than the Kosas one. So this is just such an incredible product. I know it's been really hyped up, but I feel like it is so worth the hype. Also one of the first things I would buy would be like a salmon toned color corrector for my under eyes. And the one I would buy in this category is also from NYX. This is their new Pro Fix Stick Correcting Concealer in the shade Pink. I am so in love with this color corrector. This has replaced the Sigma color corrector for me, which I never thought I would say, but I'm so happy to have found a more affordable corrector. I don't think it's a dupe for the Sigma at all. Like they're definitely very different products, but I like this one better because this has a blurring matte finish, which I feel like is so hard to find in color correctors. Like so many of them are very emollient and glowy, and I just don't want that. I want something blurring and smoothing for my under eyes. That's what I'm looking for. And this is everything that I was looking for. So I love it. It comes in a stick, which honestly for me, I didn't think I was going to like the stick format because for some reason, when I think of a stick, either foundation or concealer or any kind of complexion product in a stick, I automatically assume it's going to be cakey. But I think that's just because that's how stick products were like 10 years ago, but not anymore. Like this is such a smooth, product. It glides on. Um, you only need a little bit. Like I will just swipe it pretty much from the inner corner of my eye down in this just darkest region of my under eye. And then I just tap it out with my finger. It blends in in like five seconds and it really is so brightening without actually making the skin of my under eyes look too light. Like I don't like when my under eyes look lighter than the rest of my face, but it still somehow manages to be brightening and also cancel out those purpley blue dark circles. I love it. I always pair it with concealer. I do feel like on its own, it doesn't quite give me the coverage that I want, but typically with color correctors, I wear them in conjunction with concealers. And these two right here, both from NYX are just a dream team. <laughs> like this is my favorite under eye combo right now. For blush, I decided to go with a cream blush because I do feel like more often than not, I reach for cream blushes over powders. And I decided to go with a blush that has really stood the test of time for me. I think I first tried this blush in 2022. So it's been two years that this has been a favorite and it is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush. This is still such an amazing formula. It really does hold up to all of the other cream blushes that I've tried since. I specifically have the shade Nude Kiss and I love this color so much. It is like that perfect pinky red that really does emulate the color that my cheeks naturally produce. And I also chose this because I feel like this shade works any time of year. Like it looks really pretty in the winter as kind of like a just in from the cold sort of color, but it also gives you kind of a sun-kissed look that I feel like works great in the spring and summer. It really is just such a year-round blush shade for me. I'm wearing this today. I used this again the other day and I was just reminded how much I love this blush. It has a very kind of thin feel, like very thin and slippy, but it stays on my cheeks really well and I feel like it just gives my cheeks this almost like plumped up glow. I never have any patchiness with this. It never lifts up my foundation underneath. It just like plays well with other products and it's really just one of those blush colors I feel like goes with everything. So this would be my first blush purchase if I needed to start my collection over. I feel like when something has been a favorite for this long, that's when you know it's a good product. That's the only cream cheek product I chose. So the next step is powder and the powder I would choose is one that I like on my under eyes and my entire face. And I decided to go, of course, with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Loose Setting Powder. I chose the shade Light in this, although I do also have the shade Light Pink and I am loving that for the under eyes. Like that is usually the one I choose for my under eyes over the light shade. The light shade is just kind of a translucent white color, but the light pink has like a little bit of a pink tint and I feel like it just is so perfecting to my under eyes. But if I could only buy one, it would be the light shade because this shade I will also use all over my face. I'm not really going to use a pink powder on my entire face. I don't need to go on and on about this because I've already <laughs> talked about it so much on my channel. This is another one that's been a favorite for at least two years. So that's when you know it is 
a real one. Such a smooth, velvety powder. It's very perfecting to the skin. And even though they describe it as a glowy powder, it doesn't have any shimmer or sparkle to it. And it somehow blurs and perfects your skin while also giving it just the slightest natural radiance. It's so pretty. It is always my first choice under eye setting powder. It also works beautifully all over the face. The first bronzer I would purchase, again, this is no surprise, especially if you're a regular around here, but the Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade Into Sun would obviously be my first bronzer purchase. This is my top favorite bronzer in my whole collection. This is not only a beautiful formula, it is so easy to work with. I have said before, I feel like it's a, it, it is a powder bronzer, but it almost melts into your skin the way that a cream bronzer would. It's just like effortless to use. The shade in the sun is perfect for my skin tone. It has just like the slightest rosy undertone. I mean, you can almost not even really detect it in the pan. It kind of just looks like a warm bronzer, but it's not orangey. It's not too yellow toned either. I don't always love when bronzers are too yellow. This one is just the right balance of warmth and rosiness and it just it, it's like the perfect bronzer tone for my skin so that's what i have on right now i feel like it's impossible to mess up it's impossible to overdo it and i love it so that would be my first bronzer pick and then my first highlight pick this is also probably not going to be much of a surprise to you but this is the nabla skin glazing highlighter in privilege this of all my highlighters this i think is the most impressive formula because it is so incredibly smooth on the skin to the point where I can apply it to any part of my face and it's not going to look textured or too thick. I feel like most highlighters I can't really apply to like my forehead because they just make my forehead look so textured, but this one doesn't do that. I feel like it just looks incredibly like glassy and also natural at the same time, no matter what part of your face you put it on. It's another one of those highlighters you really can't overdo it because it's just so... Like, the, the shimmer particles in here must just be so finely milled that it just looks flawless on your skin. I might go with a different shade if I were just building a collection from scratch. I might go with one of the more just, like, golden shades. This is... I think I would go with the shade... what's it called? Ozone? That's probably the shade I would pick. This, this Privilege shade is a little bit more peachy, and I love it. Like, I feel like it pretty much goes with most of my products, but I think if I were just starting a collection over, I would want to get a more just, like, standard highlighter shade, whereas this one's a little bit more of like a specialty shade. It's almost like a duochrome in a way. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really look duochrome on your cheeks, but anyway, I think that's that's all. That's all I need to say. I would, of course, have to buy an eyeshadow primer. That is a must for me. And for this one, I am going with one that has been a favorite for so many years. This is the Milani eyeshadow primer. This is just such a good primer. A tube of this will probably last you two years uh, at least because you need just like the tiniest amount of this. It keeps my eyeshadows in place. I really like it too. And the thing that I feel like sets this apart from other eyeshadow primers is that this, if you give it about 30 seconds to set, which is what it says to do, it says, Apply to clean dry lids, blend well, and allow to set for 30 seconds. So usually I'll apply this and then fill in my brows. And then by the time I'm done with that, it has set. And when it dries down, it doesn't stay too tacky. It has a little bit of tack to it to hold on to shimmers, but it mostly dries down to like a powder finish. And I feel like because of that, matte shadows blend so easily over this. A lot of eyeshadow primers will stay kind of sticky. And then when you go to blend your mattes, they will get kind of skippy. That's the problem I had a lot with the CoverGirl Lid Lockup Eyeshadow Primer. That was very effective at holding my eyeshadows in place and preventing creasing, but it was just a little bit too tacky. It didn't have that dry down that this Milani primer has. The only thing about this is it doesn't necessarily have a ton of coverage. So if you're looking for a primer that's also going to cancel out any discoloration, this may not be what you're looking for. But otherwise, it is just such a workhorse in my routine. My favorite way to fill in my brows is with a brow pen, and I love the NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen. I am still waiting for this one to run out. I thought it was almost done. So I actually repurchased one that I still haven't opened because I'm still, still using up this other one. But this I have in the shade Blonde. I repurchased it in the shade Taupe because I think Blonde is just like the teeniest bit too warm for me. But I mean, with, with the red tint still in my hair, I feel like the warmer blonde shade works just fine for me. But this has a super fine brush tip. And what I love so much about this type of brow product is that it really is the best at replicating the look of a hair. And I don't even use a ton of this. I will mainly just focus it on sparse areas or areas where I feel like there's like a gap in hairs where I want to fill it in. And then I'll just use it to create a little bit of shape on the bottom and in the front. And I feel like that just gives me the most natural 
but still very structured and put together brow. I love it. So this plus the Ardell brow glue is my favorite, favorite brow combo. The only thing to keep an eye on with this is that sometimes it leaks a little bit out the top, like around this part, it'll leak. It only started happening to me after I had this open for maybe like six to eight months. I've now had the same one open for over a year. So what I'll do is when I open it, I'll just check to see if it's leaking. And if it is, I'll just wipe it off and it's fine. But just be aware of that. I feel like that's a common problem with NYX. Also with their Epic Wear liquid liner that I had years ago, that one, the same thing happened with that one after I had it open for a long time, it started leaking. But obviously that wasn't too much of a deal breaker for me because I already <laughs> repurchased another one. I just feel like the look I get with this is so just it's exactly what I'm looking for. So that would be my first brow pen purchase. I've also in the past used the Urban Decay brow blade and I feel like this is every bit as good as that. Plus it doesn't have the pencil on the other end which I don't really feel like I need. So that is my favorite. So for rebuilding my makeup collection from scratch, I decided to pick an eyeshadow palette and a single eyeshadow because I like to have both. <laughs> so the eyeshadow palette I chose, this might be surprising to you, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not. For me, it was very easy to decide this one. I didn't really deliberate much on the palette choice. I just, like, this was the one that I knew I was going to go for. And it's the Sigma Ambiance palette. If you remember, I did a video ranking every single palette I used in 2023 by the number of uses. And this was among the top, like, two or three, I think, of the year. And that is without this ever being part of a project pan or any other type of focus project. That was completely organic usage. I just love this palette. I don't even, I don't even know what it is about it. I just feel like I always get such a nice sultry look when I use this. Um, but I can also get a really natural, easy, everyday look if I want to. Today I did, I used kind of a lot of the shades, but I started out the look. Usually I start out my crease with the shade Basque. It's just this perfect caramely brown shade. I just, I love that shade. It is so beautiful. So I started out my crease with that and then I deepened up a little bit with Oasis, which is a little bit of a darker, slightly warmer brown. Then for most of my lid shade, I have the shade Midas, which is this sort of bronzy golden color. And then I also topped that with a little bit of Marigold, which is a beautiful rose gold, very glittery shade. Then on my inner corner, I use some of the shade Luster, this like light champagne -y satin pink shade. And then I love that the matte cream color in here is just the slightest bit deeper than my skin tone. It's just ever so slightly deeper. So it's just something a little bit different than all the other matte cream shades I have in my palettes. It really is the perfect kind of cross between a blending shade and a transition shade. Like I'll just kind of use this all around the brow bone and around the outer corner if I just want to clean up a little bit. It's a great cleanup shade, but it also blends into the other shades in here so beautifully. A lot of times I'll even start out my crease with that shade. And then I also use some of Basque on my lower lash line for like a smoky lower liner. I just love the warm golden brown tones of this palette. And I am so into warm tones lately. I really have not been in much of a cool toned phase for a while now. I just feel like these days I just... I don't know, I just feel like warm tones are a little bit more flattering on my skin tone. I, I usually say that I have a neutral, leaning, cool undertone, but I don't even know if that's true. I almost think I might have an olive undertone because in some lighting, my skin has like some pink undertones, but then it also kind of has like a golden tint. So I, I'm starting to think I might have a very pale olive undertone, but it's funny because I never go for any sort of olive shade. But I think that's also probably because a lot of olive complexion products are more like medium tone. There really aren't that many fair olive undertones. So I just go for fair neutral and that works for me. But I don't know, I'm starting to question <laughs> what I've thought for years about my undertone. I just love these warm, toasty, yummy shades. I also feel like they really complement my eye color nicely. So yeah, this was a no-brainer and I love the quality of the shadows in here. I didn't love the Sigma Enchanted palette. I felt like that one, some of the shades were just kind of patchy. They didn't really go on true to color. There were some kind of dud shades in there. I just, I don't know, I wasn't into the formula of that palette, but I do think they must have done something to improve their formula when they came out with this one because all the shades in here work beautifully for me. They all blend amazingly. Um, the shimmers are just gorgeous and sparkly. So I am a huge fan of this palette. The single shadow I decided to go with, this was also honestly a no-brainer. I chose ColourPop Ritz. This is from their Super Shock line. 
I used this as a topper today and it just gives the most beautiful glimmer to the lids. This is a great topper shade. I love pairing this over a taupe or over a more bronzy tone. It just works with so many different things. I also like wearing it on its own too. It's kind of like a subtle taupey brown base. Usually I use it as a topper, but I also think it looks beautiful on its own for just like a sheer wash of color. I think I only just bought this last year. Like I've only had this for about a year and I feel like I've gotten so much use out of it. So that was another easy pick. This was honestly so easy. Like I wrote out this list within like 10 minutes. I was like, I know exactly what I'm picking for every category. It was very easy. So I feel like that shows that like I know what my favorites are. I did not pick an eyeliner because honestly, nine times out of 10, I don't reach for eyeliner. I just use eyeshadow as eyeliner like today. That's what I did. I, I just, I don't know, I don't really like eyeliner that much these days. So jumping straight into mascara, I decided to pick what I would consider to be my current favorite mascara, or at least out of all the mascaras I've tried within the last year or so, this one has been my favorite. Uh, this one's actually empty or, well, it's retired, expired, you know. Um, it's probably not totally empty, but this is the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal Volumizing Mascara. I loved this mascara for the entire six months that I had it open. This was just such a reliable mascara. I didn't get any smudging with this. Towards the very end when it started to dry out, I got a little bit of flaking, but for like 90% of its lifespan, I didn't get any flaking or smudging. It has that really interesting packaging where you don't twist it to open it, you just press it down and it opens up. The brush looks like nothing special, like it just looks like a pretty typical natural style bristle brush. It's kind of a big brush too, like bigger than what I typically like, but I honestly feel like sometimes even smaller brushes make a mess, so I don't even, I don't even know if I care that much about the size of the brush anymore. But this one I felt like it was pretty easy to control the brush because it's not a super long brush, it's really just thick. And I loved this because it is very customizable. You can do one coat and get a natural look, or you can build it on itself and it builds really nicely. You can do up to like three coats. I'm, I'm sure you could keep going maybe. I've never tried more than three coats, but when I build it up to three coats, my lashes look practically fake, you know, like they just look really dramatic. So I love that I can kind of go either direction with it. it. Just makes my lashes look really pretty. So that would be my mascara pick. Okay, so we've made it to the lip category now and I decided to choose a lip liner, a lipstick, which I went with the tinted lip balm because that's my favorite type of stick lip product. And then I also chose a gloss. So the lip liner I went with, I've been wearing this lip liner every single day that I wear makeup practically. Like it is just so beautiful. I love not only the shade, but also the formula. This is the Jones Road, the lip pencil in the shade mauve. Surprising that it's the shade mauve because usually I find mauves a little bit too purple leaning, but this is a beautiful, just very soft pinky mauve. It basically matches the natural color of my lips, which I think is why I love the shade so much, is that it doesn't necessarily even look like I'm wearing lip liner when I wear this, but I love how just smoothly this glides on and how easy it is to blend. I do feel like a lot of wooden pencil lip liners, or just lip liners in general, can be a little bit more on the stiff side, which isn't always a bad thing, but sometimes they're not very blendable when they're very stiff. This, I wouldn't call it creamy, like it doesn't, you can't like smush the tip of this or anything. Like it has a firmness to it, but it feels so soft as you apply it. Like it doesn't feel like a hard pencil that you have to really bear down to get any color off. Just glides on. I can just blend it really easily with my finger. I like wearing this by itself. Even on no makeup days, if I just wanna make my lips look a little bit bigger, I will just very subtly overline with this and then kind of blend it out. And it doesn't look like I'm wearing any lip product. I think my lip liner preferences have really been changing because if you remember, for the longest time, my favorite lip liners were the Koki retractable lip liners. And I still recommend those if you want something very long wearing. Those are great, like they are truly waterproof, but I've just been kind of realizing like, I don't necessarily need my lip products to be that long wearing. Like I don't mind reapplying throughout the day. And I just feel like the look that the Jones Road lip pencil gives me is so much more natural. Whereas the Koki one can look a little bit heavy sometimes. I used to not mind that, but now I just feel like, you know, my tastes are changing and this is my new favorite. It's my new favorite. There, I said it. Okay, for my tinted lip balm, I almost chose the Jones Road lip tint in Nude Mauve because that has also been one of my like most worn lip products at the moment. But I was going back and forth between the Jones Road Nude Mauve and the Ravy Beauty Effortless Lip in Lily. 
both of these are very similar. They're both kind of like a beigey nude tinted lip balm, but I ended up going with Ravy Lily because this one is, I mean, they're honestly very similar shades. If you look at them side by side, it's like, what's the difference? It's hard to tell, but the Ravy one is just a tiny bit more peachy, like a tiny bit more of a warm peachy nude. Whereas the Jones Road one is more of like a beigey mauve color. I can almost not even tell the difference between the formulas of these two. Like they feel very similar. They have a very similar amount of pigment to them. Very similar buildability also. Like you can apply one coat and you get a very sheer color. Or you can build a couple layers and get a little bit more like noticeable color to your lips. And they both just feel very comfortable. Um, not sticky, not gloopy. They give a little bit of shine, but it's nothing like super glossy. But like I said, I ended up picking the Ravy one in the shade Lily because I just like the shade of this one a tiny bit more. But these two are so interchangeable for me. Like these have both been in and out of my purse for the last few months. I just love them so much. So that was hard to pick, but Ravy won in the end. Last but not least, I also of course had to pick a lip gloss. And when I look at my lip gloss collection, there is one formula that stands out to me as the best. There's nothing else like this that I've tried, and it's the Lawless Forget the Filler lip glosses. I've been wearing the shade Cherry Vanilla on my lips throughout this whole video over just a very light application of the Jones Road Mauve lip pencil. I've been wearing this all throughout the video, flapping my gums, drinking water. I have not reapplied for the past, like, I think I've had this on for two hours now. And look how glassy and shiny my lips still are. This is the only lip gloss that I would describe as long wearing. So many lip glosses wear off very quickly and that's kind of just something that I feel like we've all come to accept about most lip gloss formulas. But of all the lip glosses I've tried, this is really just unlike anything else. I feel like the, they do feel a little bit sticky, which I think is necessary if you wanted to have any sort of staying power it's going to have to adhere to your lips. It also has quite a bit of thickness to it. Like when you open this up, like the first time I tried this and I opened it up, the applicator, it's like, you get like a long string because it's such a thick, sticky formula. But the amazing thing is that once it's on your lips, you don't get those strings between your lips as you talk or like open and close your mouth. It doesn't get gloopy and stringy. These somehow manage to be both thick and sticky but also not stringy and gloopy. Usually those two things are like one and the same and they really do live up to the name. Like I feel like more than any other lip gloss, these make my lips look like I've had lip filler. They have a very mild plumping tingle, kind of like a minty cooling tingle. Nothing painful, it doesn't hurt, but you know, it does feel like, it feels like a little something is happening. But because of how thick these are, I really do feel like they fill in the lines of my lips and just make my lips look so glassy and plump and full and I just, I love them. I love them. I want to get more shades. Um, I think if I were starting my collection over, both of these shades were ones that were sent to me in PR, not necessarily the shades I would have chosen. So I'm wearing Cherry Vanilla, which is a very sheer red. It really doesn't look that red, like once it's on. And then Juicy Watermelon is like a sheer bright pink. This one, I'm like halfway through right now. Like look at how much I've already used of this. The shades are both sheer, so I feel like the color doesn't translate that dramatically on my lips, but if I were starting over my collection, I would probably get the shade Rosy Outlook, which is like a milky clear color. That's probably what I would go with, either that or Glazed, which is like a sort of golden champagne-y shimmer one. Those are the two that I kind of have my eye on to get next. So there we have it. Those are the things I would buy first. If all my makeup disappeared, this is what I would get to rebuild my collection. Let me know down below what would be those first few products you would buy if your makeup collection disappeared tomorrow. What would you be going out to buy first? I would love to hear. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you had fun, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Double check to make sure you're subscribed if you think you are. Sometimes YouTube randomly unsubscribes people, so double check, click the button, it is free to subscribe. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel even further. My patrons and members get an exclusive vlog and makeup video every month, so I would love to have you over there as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye!